They say that home is where the heart is. Turns out, it's also where lots of other things are as well. Most of our houses have had a whole previous life before we knew them, when other people lived there instead of us, and every once in a while a relic of that previous life will turn up, unexpectedly, and teach us a little more about our house's past. And depending on what kind of people lived there before us, these relics can be very interesting for a whole variety of reasons. Here are 42 stories about some of the most bizarre, wacky, cool, or straight-up mind-blowing objects that people have ever discovered inside their homes. Without further ado, close the blinds, dim those lights, cuddle under your favorite blanket, and let's begin. Number 42, Hidden Stash by Mad Mike 32322. I found a VH tape from a rental store in the basement. Someone had stashed it away in the wood boards of the ceiling and left it there after moving. After some hesitation, I popped into an old VCR and found that it was some crazy 80s erotic film. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing at the absurdity of it. Number 41, Spoonful of Sugar Gone Wrong, by Dragon140. Um, I found a spoonful of what turned out to be drug residue on Q-tips in an old dresser drawer at my new house. Number 40, Modern Art, by Soli12. We found a stack of acrylic paintings in the basement, all very amateurish. Subjects range from creepy little girls to 70s style psychedelic nude ladies. We had our realtor tell the owners to pick them up or they would end up in the trash. They showed up a year later asking for them. <laughs> As a bonus, the junk removal guy loved the paintings and asked to keep them. Number 39, It's Not Easy Being Green, by Book Thrower. In the attic of my house, I found a small frog sculpture made out of metal. It had very pronounced nipples. Number 39, It Was Bound to Turn Up One of These Days, by Sausage Linger Levin. We found a 38 revolver hidden in a closet in our new house. We had a police officer friend run the serial number. Turns out it was stolen in a home burglary in 1973. We found it in 1998. Number 37, X marks the spot by Finding Nemo. My parents bought a new house when I was like 11 and I was super stoked because I had a finished basement that was mine, all mine, to play with my friends. I technically had more living space than my parents. The only part of the basement that was unfinished was the laundry room. One day, I was standing on the deep freeze and looked up in the ceiling boards. I discovered that it was totally the treasure hiding spot for the last kids who had lived in the house. Army men, bubbles, jacks, coins, Barbie accessories, crayons, anything small that you could hide on the side of a two by four was there. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. Number 36, Toy Scary by Rack Focus. My kids found a crawl space up in the bedroom they then found Ken dolls in it, with their heads melted and with razors embedded inside. Uh, I did my best 
to lighten the freakishness and joke that Sid from Toy Story must have lived there. Number 35, Room for One More by Himdel33. I rented a house with a couple of friends a few years ago. In the attic, we found what we would come to call the angry room. The stairs led up to the finished part of the attic, and through a heavy wooden door was the unfinished area with no windows or lights, following the path of narrow carpet scrapes as it snaked off into darkness. You come to a rough door that latched only from the outside. Next to the door was a pull chain for the single bare light bulb in the tiny room on the other side of the door. Inside, it was completely featureless, aside from the various metal brackets on the ceiling and two of the walls. The door had scratches on the inside, and there were a few small holes in the walls. <laughs> but hey, the rent was cheap, and it was close to campus. Hmm. Number 34. A Sign of Things to Come by Spooperfish Okay, when I rented the property, I moved in and found a large sign in the garage that had the words Meth House in big letters. It certainly helped connect the dots about everything else that was wrong with the place. Number 33, Fair Game, by Rex Grossman's Ghost. I found a ticket to the 1934 World's Fair in Chicago. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was too late for me to be able to attend. Number 32, Photo Finish by I Throw Socks at Cat. I have found a USB drive belonging to the previous owner of the house. It held 32 photos of his car and one of his wife and baby. Number 31, Full of Surprises by It's Cursed. My cousin found an honest-to-gosh hidden room. A bookshelf swung forward and revealed an unfinished place under the stairs. It had a water glass and some Star Wars books from 1996 in it. I wonder if the previous tenants before us used to lock their children there. Number 30. Putting the Fun in Funeral Home by Nitty Vicky. My parents bought a home that used to be a funeral parlor almost a hundred years ago. Dad had never questioned why there was a second wall that went nowhere until the day a pipe burst and they finally had to cut it open. Inside, we found a small walled off room that contained hundreds of old bottles, old equipment, chemicals, perfume salts, stained glass windows from the original building, and a few old ledgers and accounting books. My parents had no use for this stuff, and a local antique shop owner slash town historian was more than happy to take it when offered. Hmm, kind of curious. Number 29, Take Note by Endura JW2. We found a box full of random things in the basement of our apartment. Inside, there was a notebook filled with handwritten notes that progressively got less and less legible. Phone numbers, names, stories, etc. We tried calling a few of the numbers, just for fun, and thank goodness no one answered. Number 28 we're in the money now by Graham TG21. After moving into our new house, we found about $14,000 stuffed behind the toilet. 
apparently the person who lived in the house before us did not believe in banks. Number 27, Seeing Red by Permalink. <laughs> I found a pool of dry blood stains above and behind the bathroom mirror. <laughs> the rest of the bathroom looked to have been hastily painted to cover the situation up. Number 26, Happy Hannah Cat by Coco121. We bought our house in September of last year. Well, about this time last year, our cat started playing with this little wooden thing he found. We had no idea what it was, but it turned out to be a little dreidel. We had never seen it before, but that was the moment when our cat let us know he was Jewish. <laughs> Number 25, Time for Change, by Ginnards. I found piles of change, so much change, countless pennies, nickels, and dimes, with the occasional quarter sprinkled in, all buried in the ground around the house. I'm not even sure how much there is, because I'm still finding more money. Number 24, Speak Easy When Reading This One, by Loden. When I was a kid, we bought this one old house that used to have a general store in the basement. Beneath the basement stairs, there was a hidden hooch room with empty old bottles and two little stools rigged to a pulley system so that the door would slam if someone opened the door to enter the shop. It was apparently a hooch house during the Prohibition times. Number 23, A Vicious Cycle, by Miller Time 0503. We found an entire bicycle, split up into parts, buried in the backyard. I am not sure if I should be worried, or just laugh about it. Number 22, Open Secret, by Crispy Apple Pie. We found an uncomfortably obvious meth lab and a secret passageway. Walls have been gutted, leading from a bedroom closet to a linen closet close to the back door. Number 21, A Revolutionary Discovery, by Loden. We found what we thought were decorative bayonets above one of the garage doors. Turns out, they were actually Civil War bayonets. With them were 13 star flags, a very old atlas, and a bunch of other cool things from the 19th century. It was an incredible house but my folks sold it along with most of the cool stuff during their vicious divorce a few years later. The atlas was divided into individual pages to sell, which is a horrible thing to do if you ask me. Number 20 So You Are the Culprit By Such a Fart When I was young and we were moving, I didn't feel like cleaning my room, so I stuffed a bunch of knickknacks and some mildly dirty underwear into a hole in the wall before we patched it up. <laughs> I hope someone finds my treasure one day. <laughs> Number 19, The Pet That Smiles Back by Clementine Man. I found a dried, inflated pufferfish staring at me from the deep, dark corner of the kitchen cabinet the very first time I opened it. <laughs> Little bit uh, weird, I would say. Number 20. 
Number 18. A Discovery of Biblical Proportions by Dilexia Yoda I found a soldier's pocket Bible from 1861. It was in mint condition, with a gold-leaf clover and an inscription from his sister. Number 17, Lord of the Rings, by Sentinet Meat Popsicle. The previous owner's wife had passed away not long before he purchased the house. About a week after we took possession, the realtor called us and asked if we found the owner's wife's wedding ring in the master bedroom closet. We had not. A few years later, we were cleaning on top of the kitchen cabinets and found the ring. Why it was on top of the kitchen cabinets, we'll never know. However, we were able to track down the owner and return it. Number 16. Are you ready to rumble? By Arendelle. I found a child-sized WWE belt in my new house. Despite the excitement of just having purchased my first home, and the stress of suddenly becoming several years worth of salary and debt for the first time, I was most interested in how I could possibly wear such a fine article of clothing to work each day. Number 15. Locked and Loaded Um, I found a shotgun in the drop tile ceiling of the basement. Should I be worried? Number 14. Someone's Been Naughty by M.C. Gatto I found a cardboard box with handcuffs inside. I thought it was a box of extra hardware for the closet shelves. This was after the previous owners had sent a message to the realtor asking if I had found a digital camera. Um, I haven't yet, but I'd be kind of curious slash afraid to look at what was on it. Number 13 On One Condition by Crispy Apple Pie I found an antique piano from the early 1900s. Had it been kept up in better condition, we were told it would have been worth at least $10,000 because it was of a particularly rare model and brand. Number 12. Can't get enough of this picture by Dragon 140. I can't find a picture right now, but there was a small cardboard box with several dozen headshots clipped from a very old newspaper in the rafters of my 1915 home. They were all the same photo of a young woman from the neck up, about two inches square. Several were pasted into a large leather book on each page. Number 11. Next Time Won't You Play With Me by Thumper Soup In the dark, musty attic, we found an ancient baby swing and crib. It's still there, and I'm scared to go up there for fear of seeing the gleaming eyes of some monster baby sitting there in the dark. Number 10. Striking Gold by Rather Dash 1NG. Earlier this year, I moved into a new apartment and found four unopened cans of 7-Up Gold and a gap between my kitchen cabinets and the wall. 7-Up Gold was discontinued in 1988. Number 9. Devils in the Details by Loden. In the rafters of the new garage were a collection of leather breastplates, helmets, and a horse harness from the first local volunteer fire department, and a picture of the former owner and a devil costume for Halloween. Number 8. 
Number eight, under the radar. Okay, I'm not very tall, and I was cleaning out my bedroom while preparing to move out of the house my family had rented for about three years. At the very top of the closet were a balled up pair of strangers used underwear, which had evidently been there for at least the three years that we had lived there. That was gross to say the least. Number seven, bathroom break. We found bullet holes behind some bathroom wallpaper that we were removing, and then we found an old roll of film hidden underneath the old jacuzzi tub that came with the house. I don't know if I should look at it or just leave it alone. Number six, a sharp one by Bala Pace. We opened up the wall to repair a busted pipe. I noticed a pile of debris in the wall and luckily happened to be wearing gloves. I reached in to grab the debris and throw it away. <laughs> and I pulled out a handful of blades. Turned out there were several more handfuls of them still to come. I later learned a feature of the mid-century modern bathroom was a blade disposal slot in the back of the medicine cabinet. <laughs> Super gross and creepy. Be on the lookout for this in any house you ever buy. Number 5. Don't Keep Her Waiting by Christen750 in the space above the garage, we found a mannequin in a frilly dress, set up looking directly at the entrance. I'm a little concerned, to say the least. Number four, a picture is worth a thousand words. By four years, Mitt. I found a very large, colored in black and white photograph in an ornate gilded frame in the attic. The photo showed a young child in a white lace dress wearing a cowboy hat and boots standing on the steps of a city building with a pony. The building in the photo was clearly a style of architecture that isn't found anywhere near where I live. Also, the child was the ugliest child any of us had ever seen. <laughs> Scary ugly. <laughs> I wasn't even envious about the pony. That kid was just so ugly. We hung the photo in a prominent spot and would make up a story about the person slash pony slash photo taking turns. We left the thing in the attic when we sold the house. Just didn't seem right taking it. Number three, shedding some light on the past by Alpha EP1. I grew up in the middle of nowhere, deep in rural southern Idaho. The farm my folks rented was very odd. There was a ton of old farm equipment from the 40s and 50s, as well as a several, about 10, old 50s cars just scattered around the property and hidden in the tree line. The owner had a small shed on the property. She asked us to never open. <laughs> No worries. It sat between the garage and an old mobile home trailer that was never used. We moved away, and shortly after, the owner died. The new property owners went into the shed and found tons of old World War II stuff and older equipment. Guns, bayonets, and Nazi flag. All sorts of things. This shed even had an old school dirt wall basement that had old radios and tons of other crazy stuff. Number two, Gold Rush by Battling Stallion. I found a gold wedding band in one of the garden beds. It was sheer luck that the rotary hoe didn't destroy it. I let the real estate agent know about it and asked if the previous owners knew whose it was. Turns out the ring belonged to the previous owner's late husband of 50 years. He had died five years prior, but had lost the ring the first day they moved into the house, 45 years earlier. 
The woman was in tears when I handed it back, and rightly so, I think. Number 1. If These Walls Could Talk by Juniper 05 When I was in middle school, one of my brother's friends that lived down the street went missing. She had an older boyfriend who also lived on the same street. He was allegedly the last person to see her, and the story was that she had left his house late at night to walk home, and he never got the usual phone call that she had come home safely. After 24 hours of not hearing from her, he and her family filed the missing persons. Eventually, the search party stopped, the missing posters were taken down, and she was deemed as lost. Fast forward to a couple of years later, the boyfriend had been moved out of the house for a while now. A new family moves in. The kids are playing in the woods behind the house, and they find her bones. The skull was totally bashed in, and a disturbing amount of her bones were broken. She was beaten to death. The worst part was the remains were not more than six feet from the house. I have no idea why the cops hadn't found them. But it really sparked a debate in our town about how serious our police force is. my lovely lilies thank you so much for watching the new video if you can hit that subscribe and like button comment below and tell me your thoughts also don't forget to tap the little notification bell so you're always in the know on this channel as well guys you can always find me on twitter instagram snapchat and always you can hit me up in my emails Feel free to send me your stories whether they're fiction or totally true I'm always up for some great stories and oh, by the way, until next time, sweet dreams. <laughs>